The interlock is a memory symbol whose purpose is to tell you which of its inputs was last pulsed high. There are many ways to get an interlock into your program, the first of which is to click the logic folder under the program view, type in the speed key IL, short for interlock, and press enter. This populates the logic folder with an interlock symbol. Alternatively, you could expand the logic symbols folder under the symbol library, go down to the memory folder, and then click and drag the interlock over to the detail view. By default, the interlock has three inputs and one output. The numbered inputs on the left of the interlock are expandable. And like we said before, the purpose of the interlock is to tell you which of its inputs was pulsed high last. If input 1 was pulsed, then output 1 would go high. If later on, input 4 was pulsed, then output 4 would go high. The clear and set all inputs on the interlock do exactly what they say. If any of the outputs is currently high, then pulsing the clear line will set all of the outputs to zero, and acting opposite to that, the set all line will set all of the outputs high simultaneously. Note that using the set all line will give you the only instance when any of the outputs can be high at the same time. Alright, with that in mind, let's make a quick example program just to see how the interlock works. I'm going to drive two of the inputs with toggles, and I'm going to drive another one of the inputs using the output of the X panel. And I'm going to take the outputs of the toggles and feed them into the interlock. And I'm going to use two outputs of the X panel to drive the clear and set all inputs of the interlock. And lastly, I'm going to take the outputs of the interlock and tie them back to the X panel. Now that the program is complete, let's compile and upload to our processor. Now that the program is uploaded and running, let's take a look at how the interlock works. Recall that the first input is just tied to the X panel button, but the second and third inputs are both tied to toggles. If I pulse the first input on the interlock, we notice that the first output goes high. If I pulse the second input, we notice that the second output of the interlock goes high. But notice that when I leave input number 2 high, pulsing any of the other inputs will make its corresponding input go high. So in order to pulse input number 2 again, I would have to turn the toggle off, and then turn it back on. Now as you can imagine, the clear button erases all of the outputs, setting them all to off, and the set all input sets all of the outputs to high. Retriggering any one of the inputs restores the interlock to telling you which of its inputs was last pulsed high. When is it good to use an interlock? Well, an interlock is really good to use for source selection, because when you think about it, if you have a single destination and multiple inputs, you only want one input at a time going to your destination. In a programming environment, the outputs of the interlock can also be used to drive the enable lines of a collection of buffers. 